So um, this ad is sponsored by Anchor. If you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. Let me explain. It's free. There's creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. Anchor will distribute your podcast for you so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more. You can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. Hi there, this is Robin Norgren and I'm your host for Creativity, Montessori, and the Meaning of Life. You can find me over on Instagram under at Robin underscore Norgren or at UBU for Life. From Taking Flight by Kelly Ray Roberts. I'd like to start with a quote. To associate with other like-minded people in small, purposeful groups is for the great majority of men and women a source of profound psychological satisfaction. Aldo Huxley. It's autumn outside, and I'm having warm and fuzzy daydreams of hours spent in the studio with friends. We would sit up, sip on hot tea while we create together side by side. We would make holiday cards, knit scarves, and collage on the wide open floor. There would be joyful messes, music, inspiration, and of course a good bit of chatting about the latest fabric to debut or a newly discovered line of pattern papers or a painting class we'd love to take at our local art store. While making things, we'd discuss our creative lives, our personal lives, our creative hopes and dreams. Best of all, we'd exclaim, how cute is that, as we delighted over our finished creations while planning our next gathering. What I love and envision the most in all of my daydreaming is the idea of being surrounded by creative women who get inspired by the collective energy of being with other like-minded women. It makes my heart still in warmth. In your own daydreams, what's your place in your community? What's stopping you from making those daydreams a reality? We've all had moments of shying away from other creative souls, hesitant to share our work or our words because we're worried that we're not good enough, that our creativity isn't creative enough. But I assure you, it's never too early in your journey to become part of a group of like-minded individuals. Intimidation can only cause you to miss out on some valuable opportunities. Finding our community is essential for our creative dreams to take flight. It gives us the momentum we sometimes need to keep fearlessly leaping toward our creative goals. Whether you are a full-time artist or a stay-at-home mom who loves to create in your spare time, finding other individuals to support you in your creative endeavors is one of the most rewarding discoveries along the creative path. Besides the pure fun that happens when inspired women get together, connections are made over mutual creative sparks. Ideas are born. Dreams are born. Accountability is birth. The spirit of friendship soars. Perhaps you already have days like the one I daydreamed about in your very own studio or at a friend's home, where you and your art pals are blissfully sprawled out together on the living room floor with your supplies. If so, then you likely understand that collective energy and spilling of ideas and inspiration I'm referring to. But what about taking the next step and enrolling in that scrapbooking group or knitting circle or your local craft store? Are there areas in your life where you could expand your artistic community? If you're like me, a bit shy with a tendency to cocoon yourself inside your cozy home, then you'll need to make a focused effort to find your community. Lucky for you and me, these moments between women creating our hearts out, loving every minute of our time together, are not hard to come by. It can all start in the comfort of your home, in your pajamas, on your computer, on your computer like it did for me. The internet is a wondrous tool to get you started in finding your creative community, 
There are all sorts of artful blogs, weekly online creative challenges, countless mixed media groups and creative swaps occurring between like-minded people who live all over the country, even the world. These online communities encompass a variety of creative mediums, including knitting, photography, fine art, illustration, sewing, and more. It's a large, inspiring world right at our fingertips. And the best part is that there is a bit of an amenity, so the experience doesn't feel as intimidating at first as a physical community might. When I was just beginning my artful journey and searching for a community of my own, I was especially delighted to discover the large interactive community of artists and crafts, crafters who have blogs. They're like ongoing personal art jour journals full of colorful photos, words, creations, ideas. Readers are invited to leave comments, which leave a trail of links to other artful blogs with more color, more art, more inspiration. And yes, more commenters with more links. It's a world of endless interaction where people, strangers to one another but creative companions in spirit, encourage one another along the path. There are even swaps and collaborations that take place among people who may never have met, but who share a common interest in a specific craft or an appreciation for one another's work. From Henry Nouwen's book, Spiritual Direction, when the young Zen student complains that his master has not taught him anything after three years of being together, the master responds, don't you understand that I've been teaching you during every moment you've been with me? The reply of the master powerfully expresses the central role of the spiritual guide. After everything has been said and done, what we have to offer is our authentic selves in relationship to others. What matters most, what transforms, is the influence of a humble, vulnerable witness to the truth. One of the main objectives of spiritual direction is to help people discover that they already have something to give. Therefore, the director needs to be a receiver who says, I see something in you and I'd like to receive it from you. In this way, the one who gives discovers his or her talent through the eyes of the one who receives. Therefore, the essence of spiritual direction is the quality of witness. And witness is the proclamation of what we have heard, seen with our eyes, what we have watched and touched with our own hands. 1 John 1.1 1, 1. To be a witness means to lay down your life for your friends. To become a, quote, martyr, unquote, in the original sense of the word. To be a witness means to offer your own faith experience and to make your doubts and hopes, failures and successes, loneliness and woundedness, available to others as a context in which they can struggle with their own humanness and quest for meaning. Instead, we often hide behind our many emotional, mental, and spiritual masks. Who really wants to make their struggles available to others as a source of growth and understanding? Who wants to be reminded of their weaknesses and limitations, doubts and uncertainties? Who wants to confess that God cannot be understood? that human experience is not explainable, and that the great questions of life do not lead to answers, but only deeper questions. Who wants to be vulnerable and say with confidence, I don't know? To offer and receive spiritual direction calls for the courage to enter into the common search, confront our brokenness, and use this capacity to grow through wisdom and understanding. Spiritual direction means to listen to the other without fear and to discover the intimate divine connections with your own stormy life history. It means to help others discover that their questions are human questions, their search is a human search, and their restlessness is part of the restlessness of the human heart, your own included. To those with serious struggles and burning questions, I want to reach out with compassion and say, you seek answers to what cannot be fully known. I don't know either, but I will help you search. I offer no solutions, no final answers. I am as weak and limited as you are, but we are not alone. Where there is charity and love, God is there. 
together we form community. Together we continue the spiritual search. Daisies by Mary Oliver It is possible, I suppose, that sometime we will learn everything there is to learn. What the world is, for example, and what it means. I think this as I am crossing from one field to another. In summer, and the mockingbird is mocking me. As one who either knows enough already or knows enough to be perfectly content not knowing. Song being born of quest, he knows this. He must turn silent were he suddenly assaulted with answers. Instead, oh, hear his wild, caustic, tender, warbling, ceaselessly unanswered. At my feet, the white petaled daisies display the small suns of their centerpiece. There, if you don't mind my saying so, their hearts. Of course, I would be wrong. Perhaps their hearts are pale and narrow and hidden in the roots. What do I know? But this, it is heaven itself to take what is given, to see what is plain, what the sun lights up willingly, for example. I think this as I reach down not to pick, but merely to touch the suitability of the field for the daisies and the daisies for the field. <laughs>